Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Chelsea, you know that, I know that. I'm just a lady with a camera, too many opinions, and a bulldog. Wait, is that it? What's my intro? Anyways, I'm here to ask you today, do you remember this? Well, that creator, Jordan Cheyenne, after making an apology video, doing an interview with Josh Barber of the Dad Challenge podcast channel, then just got off the internet, I guess, and then came back. And then now is on Instagram claiming that she is making upwards of $11,000 a week. By how? That's right, selling a course. But that's not all. If you buy her course, you can also sell her course. So yes, she is doing what's known as master resale rights, which is the obnoxious newest side hustle that the girl bosses are transitioning to and making a bunch of wild claims for. Just their newest way to line their pockets all while scamming you. So it looks like our favorite accidentally exposing yourself or exploiting your kid during one of your videos family vloggers from the past is back in action and rebranding herself as a master resale rights expert. That's a pretty bold claim. Hi, I'm interrupting this video to tell you that I not only look good, but I smell good. And you know what else looks good and smells good? The sponsor of this video, Drift. Drift creates air care products for your car and your home. All materials that they use are sustainable and their scents are made with natural essential and fragrance oils. Their car products range from $9 to $15, so they are very affordable. Now, I love a good subscription service. It's like a present in my mailbox every month. And for the first month with Draft with their subscription service, you'll receive the scent and the visor clip that it comes with. And you just go ahead and attach that right on there. Mm. My husband tries to steal these from me all the time, but guess what, buddy? This one's going in my car because it is one of my favorite scents that they offer, Grove. And it smells so, so, so good. I also love this other scent that they have. It's called Cabana, one of their candles. I need to make a note to remind myself to go on their website and get that one because it is absolutely one of my favorite candles I've ever had. Like I said, you get the visor clip and a scent with your first month and then from then on, you can go ahead and just get the scents. And their subscription is very flexible. You can change the scent you want. You can change the frequency of your orders. And then also you can cancel anytime you want as well. They also have scents of the month, which are new limited edition scents that are based on the seasons. Make sure you use my code for 55% off of your first month at drift.co. That's less than $5 for your first month. Use code CCSuarez55 for 55% off at drift.co. Jordan Cheyenne has over 100,000 followers on Instagram and 514,000 subscribers on YouTube. She started her YouTube channel in 2012 and made beauty and lifestyle content. I scrolled through her YouTube content library and I really found it interesting, the inconsistency of like the average views. For instance, if you were to scroll all the way back through mine, you can see like, Girl, you never really got over like a thousand views on your videos. When I was doing beauty and lifestyle content, should have listened to the analytics, but I didn't. And I eventually did. And here we are. Thank God. But but her views are really all over the place. And I think that's because the type of content that she was making, sure, it can fall under beauty and lifestyle. But under lifestyle, there's vlogging, there's story time videos that are really story time be commentary, I guess. But she was all over the place, truly, and made so many different genres of content. And that's just a recipe for inconsistency, I guess, and things not being in this type of income and career not being sustainable for you. For instance, if we were going to group all of her videos into different like categories and subcategories of videos or of content of genre, there would be daily vlogs, there would be eating videos, like what I eat in a week or like a day of eating, which is so I, don't, I don't know why people watch those videos. It's so strange to me. Then again, a lot of people like ASMR videos and I cannot stand them. I don't need you to pretend to be a dentist and whisper to me. I don't want that. I don't want any of that. And then there's the workout videos, the like healthy lifestyle videos, makeup reviews, tutorials, meal prepping videos, fashion and shopping hauls, favorites videos, story time videos, which used to be really popular back in the day. And then there's financial slash how to make money side hustle type videos. Now I'd say the subcategory of types of videos that she would make that would consistently pull in views would be the financial how to make money videos. And also Jordan Cheyenne, from what I remember, has been 
selling like guides and how to's and things like that for a long time before even master resale rights was a thing. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. However, when you are not selling a good product and you can tell it's just a cash grab and there's not really, I don't want to necessarily say like the professionalism, but it's its clearly just a cash grab and it's poorly done and you're just slapping something out there and putting a price on it and hoping it sells so that you can maintain this type of lifestyle and this life and this career in this industry because God forbid you go get a real job. Real job. I say that as someone in this industry. This is a real job I know, but like you go get a traditional job. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with selling a course or actually like putting all this information together and selling it. Now, as with anything, if you are overpricing things or price gouging, putting out scammy marketing material or deceptive marketing, deceptive promotion, that's not okay. Promising that people doing this will give them financial freedom, like, It's so manipulative and janky and trashy and rickety, and I hate it, and it's disgusting. Now, you might be wondering, is that what Jordan Cheyenne is doing, though? I guess we would have to buy her course to find out. So I did so that you don't have to, and I whipped out my iPad, got out the Apple Pencil, and let me tell you, the sales manager, the sales trainer in me came out and that thing is so marked up. Oh my God, (laughs) it made me so happy. Now I am not a literary expert, a writing expert in any way. However, (laughs) there were so many spelling mistakes, so much redundancy. This woman is addicted to parentheses. Like in my head, I kept hearing that line from Hamilton when it says, he says in parentheses. There's just so much repetitive wording and phrases. There is a consistency and a lack of punctuation. There we go. I'm also, listen, I'm ADHD and I'm dyslexic. So like, I'm not the best person to grade this, but anyone could. Like it's, this is so, so bad. And let me tell you this. This is her course that is $49, I believe. Let's start there. And she also is now selling her suite of courses for master resale rights for digital products, right? All of them together, I believe is over like $400 or something like that, or like almost 400, anywhere from like three to, let's say three to 500, okay? So it's like her digital marketing one, her faceless marketing one, and I believe there's like one or two more in there. This is the digital marketing Bible. And if the other ones are as bad as this or anywhere near this, and I really do think it's quite interesting (laughs) that there is so many mistakes in here that she clearly didn't mean to leave in or just didn't proofread or anything like that, because that's why she got canceled back in the day is because she (laughs) left in her doing a thumbnail of her and her kid. Also, 2012 called, it wants its method of capturing a thumbnail back. Girl, just take a picture, just take a picture, go into PicMonkey or Canva and make it instead of having to screenshot it. Also, pardon me, you are going to hear my bulldog snoring. He is snoring. Anyways, so let's go over how she is marketing this. And of course, it's just like any any other of these that we see on the interwebs, right? So she's saying things like beep beep, hop in bestie, we're making 10k a month with digital products. Don't have one? You can sell mine. Read below. And yes, she did create these apparently. And realistically, she has been doing stuff like this forever. I just don't think she had that resale aspect to it previously. I could be wrong though. And then like this one says, we're making money at home with one to two hours a day so we can work out like this and have time freedom with our kids. I'll show you how to make 10K a month below. As always, That doesn't include your expenses, your taxes, and then also, is it one to two hours a day? Are you making content during that time? Are you answering social media comments and DMs and and stuff like that? Are you doing that? In that case, it's not passive income. Like, what are you doing? Drives me crazy. So you hear the girls are making 100K a month selling digital products, but you don't have one. You can have mine, steal my product. Just comment below yes if you want me to send you the link. This is not satire and it's hilarious. 100K a month? We were just talking about 10K a month. What are you talking about? But you proved everyone wrong and now you make $11,000 every week. Does she know that 11K a week does not equal 100K a month? Next is she gonna be like, I make $7 million in four minutes. 
Like, what's going on, girl? Let's talk about consistency, please. Okay, so let's talk about more inconsistency because there is her digital marketing Bible, the only digital marketing statter guide. Yep, you'll ever need. Are you going to teach us to um, download Grammarly? Because apparently you don't do that. So you heard the girlies. Don't insult us like that. You are not a girly. Are making bank with digital marketing. Get in, bestie. I'll teach you how. I wrote this guide from the perspective of a complete beginner starting from scratch. If, if you wrote it from the perspective of a beginner, then there wouldn't be valuable information in there because a beginner doesn't have... Girl, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Okay, this digital marketing Bible will teach you everything you need to know about creating, listing, promoting, and selling your own digital products, blah, 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 e-guides, templates, e-books, whatever. So it keeps going and then it says, this 38 page guide includes, and then it goes on to say what it includes. And then a hilarious thing is, is that it says, on the cover page on like her marketing material, not on the actual cover page. It says your comprehensive 35 page guide to digital marketing for beginners. It's 38 pages and then and the listing, it also says 38 pages. So like, what are you doing? And then also as you're checking out, they try to upsell you so much and it says, Wait, we have a killer deal for you, bestie. Stop. I understand like the uh, trying to have like trendy vernacular, but this ain't it. Add the faceless Instagram guide for $37. Sneak peek inside, 25 pages with resale rights, but then it says $49. And then it says, yes, I'm in, it's a no brainer. The only guide you'll ever need teaching you how to start a brand new faceless Instagram. You don't need someone to teach you how to do that. And then it says, wait, again, there was another prompt said, wait, grab the IG content vault for just $13. And that one's at least $13. And then thank God, finally, it emailed the thing to me. You can get a bundle of both of them. And then there is bonus content. And then the digital marketing IG growth starter pack, which is the one that I got apparently. And then the faceless one. And then there is a viral manifestation workshop, which we will actually be reviewing in a whole separate video because, oh my God, reprogram your mindset to attract wealth effortlessly. That sounds like you're brainwashing someone. All right, now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, I feel like I've really set the stage for how crazy this is. So let's go ahead and go over this guide, shall we? So we're off to a real hot start. And on page two, Master Resale Rights Terms, there's, as you can see, quite a lot of errors. So there should be a period after this sentence. And then of course it says about seven times that you have the rights to sell the master resale rights. Like we get it, you didn't have to say that six times. And then of course the overuse of parentheses, you just have that be in the sentence or just start a new sentence. And then sometimes she'll have sentences by themselves be in parentheses and it's like, I don't know what you're doing. She also doesn't know what she's doing, so. And then it says, I do kindly ask that you change the cover of your digital product and rename it with a different title. Just change the cover page to whatever title you'd like and add in your brand name, username, etc. Good Lord. So here's her about me section. Hi, I'm Jordan Cheyenne. Hey, bestie. Hey, girl. A little about me. I'm a single mama to a wonderful 11 year old boy and I make a full time income selling products, blah, blah, blah. OK, this is my favorite part. I was a YouTuber for a decade and then got burnt out and needed a mental break, but was looking for a way to replace that income. Were you burnt out or canceled? And then, of course, lack of punctuation again. And then down here, she says that digital products are passive income. If you are marketing them constantly, as she is, as most of these people are, if you are having to sell it constantly, push it constantly, answer questions about it, that's not passive. Words have meaning and we cannot redefine words and phrases and analogies and, and things like that just because it makes the false opportunity and the false rainbows and butterflies and time freedom and financial freedom dream that you are selling sound better than it actually is. And then of course there's more over usage of parentheses. She misspells ebook. It is supposed to be hyphenated between E and book. And then she misspells guide. It's just good. Let me tell you, girlfriend, this guide ain't good. And then she said wealthy soft life. My only note for that is ew. 
because that sounds gross. So driving sales through ease, flow, and strategy. She said ease and flow before, passively, everything's on autopilot. It's not. <laughs> sure, people pay you and download something, but the sales aspect, like the transactional aspect of it, yes, sure. You created it, all of like that aspect of it, that is taken care of for you. That's great. It is digital, but that's, th that's it. You still have to market it if you want to make sales. You still have to talk about it. You still have to answer people's questions. Like, and with these types of things, realistically, you should be updating them every like three to six months, especially because it has to do with technology and social media, which is ever changing. All right, now before we begin, let's use parentheses incorrectly 45 more times. Okay, this one has a lot of, a lot of markups as you can see, yikes. So this is where she talks about the apps that you're gonna use the most. There's a lack in consistency with the style of bolded underlines where, where it says Canva. It's not consistent where it says stand store or flow desk. So that doesn't really make sense. And then also I personally think that she should have listed the URL or like made that clickable. And then also the pricing for the pro version of these apps and these websites. Also talking about it, if it is like more so a mobile app or if it does have like a desktop version and saying like how easy it is to use on each, talking about the interface and stuff like that. Like I, I use Canva quite a bit. CapCut, I use PicMonkey, PixArt. Anyways, all of those things, oh, Remini, I have the paid version of that too. All of those things I just listed, I use the paid version of them because within that, there's a lot of tools that I'm gonna be using a lot more. And then it like removes watermarks and stuff too. It's just better in my opinion, now that I am making money with this content to have the paid version of those things. All right, let's continue. Um, and then she says, you're also welcome to use Kajabi. I don't know if I just pronounced that right. I don't care. Or your own website. I got a question. It's Kajabi. Why didn't you explain what that is? Is it the same thing as the in-store? Again, pricing, URLs, comparisons of both hosting platforms would have been very, very helpful. And now we're moving on to creating a business name, choosing a business name, all of that. One thing I do want to say is before you create all of these accounts, and your social media and stuff like that with this new business you're apparently starting. It is, in my opinion, one of the first things you should do is opening up all of these accounts with your new like business email address. That way everything is like separated from your personal. Okay, now it's time to choose your business name, blah, blah, blah. Okay, talking about Digital Wealth Academy, improper usage of parentheses, and lack of proper punctuation. Clever, clear name, sound awesome, blah, blah, blah. Cool, girl. Like, come on. Don't overthink this. You can always update and rebrand later. Easy peasy. <laughs> Rebranding, changing URLs, changing usernames, renaming your brand, that could leave such like such confusion for your potential clients. Like that, what? That's not easy. Also, why did this person not mention checking to make sure that whatever name you pick is available. Trademark infringement who? Legal stuff, here we go. Uh, there is no disclaimer anywhere that she's not an accountant and she's not a lawyer. No, that's great. This is not legal or financial advice, says not Jordan Cheyenne. <laughs> All of the parentheses, this woman is addicted to it. Also, she kept going back and forth between using an ampersand, spelling out and, and using a plus sign. And it's like, again, consistency. Who is she? We don't know her. Is she in the room with us now? Keeps going on about how you can start selling right now. You don't need this, blah, blah, blah. Like, okay, girl. And then also, I just want to provide you with this legal info for later. I got you, bestie. Do you got us? Are you going to be held responsible for this legal and financial advice that you're giving people? Because there's no disclaimer. Also, again, this is very repetitive. She says, <laughs> this part's insane. She says, if you start making great money quickly, I highly recommend setting up an LLC slash S Corp. Why? Why do you suggest that? No explanation of why. Suggesting for people to do that without even going over the uh, what those things are, how they could be helpful for you, why they could be helpful for you. But then, <laughs> but then also doesn't go over the S corporation requirements. If someone creates a business entity, creates an LLC, selects for them to be, oh, what's the name of the form? And then fills out form 2553, which is to elect your tax classification for your, ent your entity classification for your business entity. If you set it up as an LLC, you then have to choose how it's going to be taxed. If you don't by a certain day, I believe it's 90 days. 
exists, I think, from when you establish your entity, then it is defaulted to a single member LLC, or if there's multiple of you, then a partnership or a disregarded entity could be. You would be paying more in self-employment tax, 15.3% instead of like half of that if you are selecting to be taxed as an S-corp. Guess what you have to do as an S-corporation? You don't have to, but you should file and pay quarterly estimated taxes. And then also you have to have yourself on payroll and pay yourself a fair and reasonable salary. And also there might be more things that you have to pay if you do even create a business entity, depending on what state you live in. She doesn't talk about any of that. For instance, did you know that if you are in California and you create a business entity, meaning an LLC, even if you don't make any money, even if you don't touch it, even if you don't do anything with it, it's not even up and running. You created that business entity. It's attached to your name. Guess what? Every year now, even if you make money, don't lose money, whatever, you have to pay a $600 franchise tax in California just for having an LLC registered or any type of business. But yeah, so it might not be worth it for you to even do that you might just want to stay as a 1099. You wouldn't know any of that. <laughs> you wouldn't know any of that by reading this. Ah, yikes. Okay, and then again, she ends this page by saying, again, don't feel overwhelmed immediately. This is just handy information to have in the future. Again, repetitive. You don't need to, you don't have to say that every single page. And in the middle of this page, she, she, she says, basically after registering your LLC, you will then file for an EIN, which is like a social security number for your business, right? And then from there, you can use that to open a business bank account. The thing is, is that this is so repetitive. Not only does she say the same thing that she did right above that when she says, this is just handy information for you to have in the future. You don't have to do anything right now. Not even two paragraphs down, she repeats the same thing that she said about the EIN and it being a social security number. So what I'm thinking maybe happened is that she like went through all of this and then f just didn't do a once over or a twice over. Make a guide and check it twice, girl. Did Santa Claus not teach you anything? Maybe she tried to reorder it and then like forgot to delete parts. I don't know because this entire first little part here says once you get your LLC approved, who would say the turn like average turnaround time? That would be helpful. File for an EIN with the IRS. This is like a social security number for your business. Again, why why is that why is that entire sentence in parentheses? Then you can open a business checking account at your bank using your new EIN. And my note says, did she mean to say this again here? <laughs> Are you just trying to make this longer? Do you have a word count requirement? What are you doing? And then she goes further and says, obtain a business license from your state department. Who does that apply to? You could have given examples of who would need to do that. Why are these bullet points? Also, is this a full sentence up here? Where's the punctuation? This makes no sense. Again, there's a lot of lack of explanation. So it says, make sure your website has your privacy policy and terms of agreement listed in your footer. Why? Purchase your domain. I use Google domains and you can buy three years or just one year and set up your professional email. How much does that cost? Hire a tax professional to take care of your business taxes. I love that, I appreciate that. But also why and what's the average cost? She said, this is something that can wait. You know what What can't wait? It, like I, I really don't think people understand that with business taxes, it's not just once a year. Like there is stuff you gotta do all throughout the year. And if you don't do it all throughout the year, there's gonna be so many fines that you have to pay. It's gonna be ridiculous. I think that's why I get so triggered when influencers and these scammers are like, oh my gosh, I'm doing this, this, and this. And it's like, you're just gonna leave out payroll taxes? Oh, that's another expense. If you have yourself being taxed as an S corporation and you have to have, once you start making money and you have to have yourself on that fair and reasonable salary and pay yourself through a formal payroll system, you have to pay payroll taxes. If you have an employee, like I have my husband on payroll as well, because that's a write-off and that's a smart strategy with having a business, I also now have to pay re-employment taxes because I have an employee. I hate it. <laughs> If you plan on having a no refunds policy as most digital products do to the nature of the product, make sure it's clearly listed also in your legal footer. Nothing like misspelling because and ebook and educational. I cannot. All right, so then she goes on to talk about niche and how to find it and blah, blah, blah. She misuses AKA, also known as, multiple times throughout this entire course. There's just so much repetitive information. This analogy at the bottom of this page is hilarious to me because it says, don't put too much pressure on yourself here. You only need to take people from point A 
to point B. You don't have to take them from 200 pounds to competition stage ready with your product. You only need to help them lose the first 10 pounds. And then it says, this is just an example, of course. That is so contradictory. Also, there's a whole lot of contradictions in this guide too. So it says you only need to take them from point A to point B, but then it says you don't have to take them from point A to point B. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't think she does either though. So at least we're on the same page. Okay, the whole branding part of this course is one of my favorites. She misuses ellipses multiple times. She puts she puts four periods when there should be three or two when there should be three. Are you putting a comma instead, which is very funny. It's not that funny, but still it's comical. Improper punctuation, stuff like that. Colors are super important and communicate the vibe of your brand to people before they even read your words. And she says how she found her branding or whatever, or colors. She misspells palette twice. <laughs> This example she gives is hilarious. She says, for example, look at the G-Wagon in the photo above. You already know it's a Mercedes because of their logo, because their logo is the same on every car. And they've done an incredible job using that same logo on every car slash product. So now it's always embedded in your mind, is it? When you drive down the road and see the logo, your brain goes, hey, that's a Mercedes. Does it? I don't think so. I think I'm focused on driving, girlfriend. Before you even see the car up close, this is your goal with your digital products. You want people to see your branding. Oh, no, that's my correction. You want people to see your logo slash business theme and say, hey, that's Jordan's product. I recognize that logo slash brand colors slash business name slash et cetera. There should be a period there. Super contradictory of the entire model of master resale rights. A lot of these people aren't changing the marketing or the branding rather. They're changing like their branding, like on their Instagrams, but then it's the same course. So she continues going on about colors, contradicts the entire model of master resale rights. And she says, trust me, copying someone never works. <laughs> it's literally what master resale rights is. Take the principles they use and apply them to your own content, but never copy. People need your unique personality and story. Do they need it? They will buy from you based on your life experience, etc. So there's no need to ever copy it from someone else. Girl, in your own marketing, you're not showing your unique personality and your story. It's just super long captions and you trying to sell this product and talking about how money you make. Wild. And then she continues on to misspell the word energy. Also, she uses the word denote or denotes or denoting, which means inc inciting, I believe. And then evoke, which like basically means the same thing. She uses both of those like three to four times within just these first 14 pages. It's just a lot. Like, don't do that. And then she continues on to and she talks about name licks, which is a helpful tool for both naming your business and coming up with your branding colors. Is it for free? The one that I used, yeah, it was. Kind, kind of, I don't know why I just did this, but kind of. Like, it's not free if you want to, like, download what it gets for you. But realistically, like, if I liked and, like, actually liked the one that it picked for me, I could just, like, get inspiration from that and then just, like, make it myself on Canva. But don't need to do that. Is Namelix like an AI tool? Is it a tool on a website or is it a website? I wouldn't know because th th she didn't list the URL. So I have no idea. Anyways, that would have been really helpful though because there are three different websites that show and like claim to be Namelix which is super cool. And then she goes over domain and email. I have no idea why this is over here because shouldn't this be after page five instead and not after page 16? And then she, down here, she talks about how, again, you don't have to do this now. And she says, you can start creating your own digital product today or resell this one, obviously. Without an email list or website, how would you resell it without a website? Like just having people, like just sending the people the PDF? Are you going to print it out? Uh, again, she goes on to misspell ebook, which is great multiple times. And then down here, it says you can do this with an ebook full of tips and info with a guide, a journal, a template, or a PDF. 
have a lot of questions. Couldn't all those things be a PDF? A PDF isn't what you're selling. It's just the format that it's in, or rather just the type of file. <laughs> like, okay. Also, aren't a guide and an ebook the same thing? Or like, can't they be the same thing? What's going on here, girl? And then down here, she says, people will and want to pay for something that solves their problem. It would have sounded better in my opinion. Again, I'm not a scholar here, okay? I'm a two-time college dropout. Grammarly suggested <laughs> that it should be people want to and will pay for something. Misspelling ebooks just one more time on this page. She continues to do it for the rest of the half of this guide. The rest of the half of this? Whatever, you get it. That guides and ebooks have a very high perceived value. Why? Explaining why would have been really helpful. And then pro tip again, literally says, don't overthink it. Don't get overwhelmed. Just start now. Super repetitive. Again, you don't have to put that on every single page. You know that, right? All right. Choosing a name. So, 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 so many, so many claims so many typos. <laughs> For instance, this says, my mentor once said, clear is better than clever, which I agree. When it comes to naming a product you're selling, eyes best to clearly communicate what result your product delivers. Bonus points if your product has any of these words in the title, how to, guide, proven, proven method. Those are real big claims. Is it a proven method if you just created it? Just because it worked for you doesn't mean it's going to work for other people. Like it, it's just, I don't like that. And one of my favorite typos ever. It says, these grab your customer's attention and help establish you as an expert in the field. An expert. You are an expert. I wonder if she considers herself an expert because she sure as fork is not an expert with how awful this is. And then she said, example of a product name that most likely will sell. Seven recipes your picky kids will love, guaranteed. And I said, so lie? And I get it, it's just marketing, but still like big claims, buddy. Misspelling ebook again, creating your DP. DP, girl. I thought this was the digital download Bible or digital marketing Bible, not the hub. So then she was saying the free version of Canva, but the pro version, blah, blah, blah. Again, talking about the cost would have been super helpful previously. And then she takes a solid half of this page to try to sell her faceless marketing guide, which is fabulous. And then she says that it is passive income. No, it's not. We've already talked about that. It's not. You can also check Etsy for done for you eBooks and guides. You can also copy other people's stuff. And it says, find one with your specific niche. Remember, something that solves a problem. These sell best. Then upload it to Canva to edit and make it your own. Then sell away. And I said, is that legal? Because what if those aren't, what if those aren't like master resale rights ones? What if it's, I don't know. It's just, I don't, I don't like it. Unsubstantiated claims and typos. Setting your price, she talks about how there's a psychology behind the fact that statistically products that end with a seven sell better. And she said, don't ask me why. I don't make the rules. Huh? You could have looked it up though. Also, why was this priced at $49 then? <laughs> Like you could have put that in there. That would have been very interesting for people to understand or at least listed a source. And then she says, for example, this guide of mine that you are reading right now is worth every bit of $150 at least. I think that you should pay me $150 for buying this, for reading this. And I said, why? Exactly. Why? 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 I just agreed with myself. I agree, Chelsea. You're right. Why? <laughs> a misuse of AKA again. Also misspelled. <laughs> And then it says, always over deliver on Valai. You know, Valai, you better over deliver on that. She went to put value. That's hilarious. $2,000 a month. And then she has a little formula here to figure out how many eBooks you would have to sell at what price each day to make, you know, a certain amount of money. Also keep in mind, again, that's revenue, not profit. And then she goes on about knowing enough about what your competition is doing so that you know the gaps in the market so that you can fill those in, but not so much that you start to sound exactly like them and start making your content look exactly like theirs. People want your story, so don't fabricate it. I'd, I'd say it's safe to say roughly 80 to 90% of Master Resale Rights is marketed the exact same way, including Jordan Cheyenne's. I mean, just look at it. <laughs> it's, it's the same we see every day on our For You page. All right, and then she goes on to say, it's time to create. Organize first, then create. And then she says, you have the perfect example in your hands right now, this guide. 
And she says, again, if you don't want to create your own ebook slash guide, you can resell this one. Just take my name off of it, add your own, and obviously change the about me section and you're all set, but you shouldn't copy the competition, right? Whether your plan is to resell this guide, whether like precipitation. So weave your personality slash lifestyle slash home life throughout your content. Think about your favorite girls you follow. Why do you follow them? What do they post? Replicate it, but don't copy them, right? And then that statement directly contradicts what she says next, where she says, I recommend sticking to reels and keeping your feed mainly business. It's best just to keep your personal life in your stories. So am I not putting my lifestyle and home life in reels? Am I not putting that on my feed? Like what's going on? Think of your Instagram reels as the party and Instagram stories as your house. What if Jupiter was your hairbrush and the moon was your garage? The moon was your car and Jupiter was your hairbrush. You're inviting people in to get to know you more intimately and that's where all the personal stuff should go. And then at the bottom of this, she says it's also wise to weave business and personal into both reels and stories to tell stories. I, f I feel like that, like this has, uh, mm. <laughs> I can't. Okay. By posting about why you started making your own digital products, you can connect with your audience on a deeper level than if you just list off the features of your products or benefits your product can provide. Yeah. So just, you know, manipulate them with your rags to riches story and how much money you're making and why they should also do this instead of actually just talking about the value that your product has, because clearly your product, if it's like this one has little to no value because holy shark bucket. All right. And then it says, let's automate, baby. Let's let's download Grammarly. How about that? Mini chat is the best kept secret. And actually, I think I might start using this one too, because I've always wondered how people do that. Like they're little bots. She doesn't go over the cost, of course, but mini chat is like where in your caption, you'll put something like comment Wiggum and I'll send you a DM with a picture of Wiggum. And then you comment Wiggum and then it sends you a DM with a picture of him basically, right? I feel like I should use that. But yeah, a lot of people use that. However, you know, well, that's not free. How expensive is that? Is it an app or is it a website or is it a tool on another website? I don't know. Basic version, but I will warn you, there are lots of features and more flexibility with the paid version. Again, what's the cost? How awful is this? It's super affordable. I, I wouldn't know because you won't tell me the cost. And since you're going to be making daily sales anyways, manifest it. It's pretty much free, LOL. Girl math, anyone? This woman's a part of the patriarchy. I mean, really a, a mouthpiece for them. A, still a victim of it though too, but she's profiting off of it. Can we stop? Women are amazing. Women are intelligent. Stop manipulating them. Us, them. Stop. Okay, now what? Now we we burn this guide. We put it directly in the garbage and you go to jail. Email marketing, she doesn't go over the cost of Flowdesk or any of the things she uses. Again, of course, why would she? Misspells ebook again about 45 times. One thing I love is that she continues to talk about like opt-in forms and Flowdesk and stuff like that. She talks about making a freebie, which actually isn't a bad idea. If you are selling something, it's great to put out a free like little baby version of it, like a little morsel so that people can see like, oh wow, this is really beneficial. And yeah, if I could get more of this and like a lot more comprehensive, I'd pay for it. This should have been the free version because gross. Why, why would anyone pay for this? You'll want to deliver your freebie through your workflow. I got a question. What the hell workflow? What are you talking about? What you'll do is go in to where? To what? Flowdesk? What am I doing? And set up a workflow. Anyway, so this says very important, test everything out before you launch it to real people. Love that. You don't need to put LOLL. -L. Don't do that. Stop. Like you're trying to be cheeky and cute. Cheeky. I've been watching too much Bluey. You're trying to be like sassy and cute and like, I'm just a girl. Mm, girl math. Stop. It makes me think that her target audience is immature and naive and very young. You can be young and smart. I get it. But like we've, we've all been there. Speaking of returns, we don't offer them. Yeah, you already said that like 30 pages ago, actually. You already said that, so you don't need to say it again. How awful is the attention span of the person you are selling this to? Like, come on, have more faith. I do understand that a lot of times, like you're supposed to, when you're selling something, you're supposed to act like you're basically explaining it to someone who has absolutely no idea so that there aren't any, like you're not skipping any steps. Like you shouldn't assume that they know anything. 
but this is pretty awful. <laughs> and then she says, add this text to your sales page. Due to the nature of the instant digital download, no refunds will be issued. The reason, and then nothing. What's the reason? What was reason. the reason? I had a reason. What was the reason? I had a reason. What was the reason? I just explained, I just explained the reason. What was the reason? Again, I think this is an example of her like copying and pasting and like reordering stuff, but then not going back and like deleting parts of it, which is a struggle. Yeah, not good. Okay, and then she talks about stand store, doesn't talk about the cost, but you and also do a more savvy overlay if you like. So misspelled the word can. On the time to launch section, repetitive. When she says, remember, this is, is something exciting. You're that excited that you're stuttering? That's cool. I've been there. And then she talks about retraining your mind. That's called brainwashing. I know I haven't like read every page like word for word, but we got to dive into this. Ooh, should we do a dramatic reading? Yeah. So dramatic reading time. Let's get into it. To succeed in anything in life, you absolutely must have the proper mindset. What you internally believe about yourself and what you're capable and worthy of is what will manifest into your reality. If you have a lack slash broke slash negative mindset, you'll continue to attract that into your life. The best investment you will ever make is in your own mind. Once you internally believe you're worthy and capable of success, it has no choice but to magnetize to you. All you have to do is operate on the frequency of wealth and abundance, and it will physically come into your reality. It's the law of attraction. You can either be your biggest supporter or your worst critic. Choose to cheer for yourself. I have a whole vault of guided meditations, positive affirmations, and trainings on how to up-level your mindset for success. You can access that here. It comes with daily affirmations, guided meditations, and a huge money mindset book and a daily gratitude worksheet. Now this person said, so I did the whole course after purchasing it on Tuesday. I filled out the printable check manifesting $1,000. And I've been doing the meditations at night and in the morning. This morning I opened my mailbox and this check was in there. What? in the 3 a.m. infomercial for holy water is going on here. Now, the second to last page here says resources mentioned and a few extra ones. I think misspelled will be and then misspelled beneficial. Way to end it with a bang or rather end it with a typo. So I don't know about you guys, but I would think that with how lackluster poorly edited and just empty. Let me know down below how you would describe it, like what uh, what adjectives you would use. I would think that I should get <laughs> a refund for this. I'm not gonna ask her for one, obviously. But the good thing is, is that now that I own the rights to it, I'm able to share it. I'm able to do that and apparently set my own price for it. So my price for this is free and that's why I'm showing it to you. However, hopefully by the time I finish this video and like it's posted, I have been working on making a guidebook as well. A guide E dash book. Quite long and has a good amount of information in there. I wasn't sure if I was going to name it like digital marketing or like social media marketing or I, I don't know. I couldn't really figure out a name because it's not just like, hey, if you want to, like if you want to make digital downloads, go for it. Fine. But it, it should be actual good information and not a scam. So like I go over that, but then also going over like marketing for like a new business, like whatever you want to choose. And then like starting a YouTube channel and, and stuff like that too. So I really hope I have it done by the time <laughs> this video is posted. If not, it'll be done soon after that. And I'll have it in the description box. And guess what? You can actually find it at www chelseasuarez.com and it is for sale and it is only $7,770. But don't you worry, it's on sale right now for $0 and it will remain on sale for $0 until I probably end up kicking myself for <laughs> for not charging for it. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll eventually raise it to five bucks or something. But from now until the foreseeable future, it'll be $0. And yeah, you can just do that on my website. ChelseaSuarez.com. There's that. <laughs> 
So I don't know why this person is still, I mean, going at it. I mean, actually, this is a this is a really good example of people who are in this type of industry and like can't really let go of that and don't want to get a traditional job, kind of like how Jason Nash from the vlog squad, you know, is on TikTok battling, just begging for money. And he won't just go get a, like, go get a customer service job, go get like a job in marketing. Like it's entertainment or nothing for him. Like online jobs are nothing for him. It's pretty crazy. Even though he isn't offering really any, any entertainment on there, he's just begging for money. It's quite wild personally. I just, it's insane. You really do need to have the self-awareness to know like, okay, this isn't working out. And there's no shame in that. I mean, there are a lot of people, actually Danny Gonzalez just said this in a video the other day. He was saying like, you know, there are a lot of people who were very, you know, successful and relevant on the internet. And then they were able to transition that into like doing marketing or whatever for companies or even freelance stuff. And that's actually something that uh, Jesse uh, Vasquez, Jesse Smiles did. And she's talked about that a bit too, like after her time on Vine and, you know, YouTube, she, and she's still on YouTube clearly. I mean, she has a very successful podcast now, The Girlies with Lily. It's not called The Girlies. It's called the Do We Know Them podcast. But she has talked multiple times. And actually Lily has, I believe as well, you know, talking about how Lily, you know, ed- was doing some video editing and then, I'm pretty sure Jesse has done the same, but then also she's done kind of like marketing and like social media consulting. And that's genius. And a lot of people do that. But then other people go like this route because you can make more money doing that. However, like, where's your integrity? I mean, clearly it's not there with this person, but it's just unfortunate. So anyways, yeah, go buy my course. Go buy my ebook. Okay, now I have to go film four ad reads so I can make money and then also finish that finish that guide because I keep adding stuff to it and I need to not do that. <laughs> I need to not do that. But I don't want to contradict myself and I just like ripped this ebook to shreds or this guide to shreds and be like, it should do this, this, and this, and this, but then like not include that information in mine. So anyways, all right, I appreciate you. You are the best. Your butt looks great. Please set realistic goals for yourself and be self-aware and have like realistic expectations. You can have huge goals and things like that, but be realistic with yourself. Be self-aware. Quitting something or doing like a professional pivot doesn't mean that you're quitting and you're a failure. A lot of times that can be way better for you. And just knowing when like, hey, this isn't serving me anymore. This isn't working out anymore. I cannot believe I just said serving. Sorry, but this isn't working out anymore. And I needed to do this instead. Okay. Hope you have a great day, night, weekend. Whenever you're watching this, consider subscribing. Not only consider it, but do it. Do it, please. I'm trying to get 150,000 subscribers this year. We are at 124. Four by the time I am filming this video. Anyways, goodbye. Don't buy that and buy my course. It's only $7,777 and actually 77 cents. I forgot to mention that, but it's on sale right now for $0. Popping in again real quick to just remind you to click that link in my description box to get 55% off of your first month with Drift. And thank you again, Drift, for sponsoring this video. Okay, bye.